Hello and welcome. In our fourth lesson, we are going to learn about loops and iteration. Now, loops are one of the most commonly used um, features in all of programming, and they help us um, repeat lines of code instead of us having to write the same command again and again and again. Um, so in this tutorial, we'll be um, creating a basic loop that'll repeat the desired instruction. Um, we'll be printing something called a loop variable, and then we'll be using that variable to generate a times table. So let's get started. Let's say um, if we have a basic uh, instruction like print hello, and the computer prints hello. If we were to try to print hello 10 times, we would have to write print hello, print hello, print hello 10 times. Instead, we could do something like this for i in range 0 comma 10 and the semicolon is very important now when I hit enter it will not execute a command it will actually tab down and then you see it's 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 sort of indented now that whatever I type in in this indent will actually be repeated 10 times so if I say print Hello. I'm going to make it capital. Hello. Now, this command will happen 10 times. I guess I got to press enter twice. Bingo. And just do the count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that is 10 indeed. So, the next thing I want to um, have a look at is is this variable see i here is a variable and we didn't have to create the variable we didn't have to say i equals to zero but what actually happened is we created a variable i we made it zero and then ran hello then we made i one two three all the way until nine now when we made i ten we did not run this line so actually i iterated now to iterate something means to revise it and in each iteration I got bigger by one and it started off at zero and finished off as less than ten now if it increased by one it finished off at nine so we can also do the same loop for i in range zero comma ten semicolon very importantly we could print i yeah, that should do it. Enter. And as you can see, these are the iterations of i. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So maybe we can use this skill set we just acquired to create a little program that's going to print us some multiples. So I'm just going to move that. And go file, new file. And let's say we want to pose a question to the user uh, about finding a times table of a particular number so if we say something like print what number would you like to find the multiples of I hope that sentence makes sense. And then that number, which we can call the user num, equals to input. And let's see, just print user num let's see if this works so we're going to be asked to save this i've actually created a folder called python fundamentals and i'm going to go save this as multiples okay what number would you like to find multiples of five and then it prints five so five has been saved in memory that's pretty good um so instead of printing multiples of five sorry 
instead of just printing the number 5, we're going to try to print the multiples. So we're going to go for i in range, and we're going to go back to... Now remember how 0 and 10 uh, produced 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This time we're going to go comma 1, comma 11, and this is going to produce 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So for i in range, we're going to print... And I think this is going to throw up an error. You'll see. User num times i. Now these are actually going to be a string timesing an integer trying to print out as a string. And when you go f5, yeah, the error won't kick in yet. But if we say 5, ah, that's pretty fun. So what it what it did is just multiply the string by i. Um, so that's actually fairly interesting. And I'll just get rid of this. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll make that 31. And you're going to see a fun thing. I'll run it again. You're just going to see like a pyramid of, of any numbers. If I go 7, you'll see a pyramid of 7s. Pretty cool. So we're not multiplying the string 7. So we're going to need to create a, um, to convert user num to int. And we can do it two different ways. We can put int here, which is probably easier. Or we could have done the conversion in the next line. User num equals the int of user num. So now, um, user num is actually a number. It's an integer. And I believe that when we do this this time, we're going to have a times table. 5. Yep, yeah, we say 5, and then we get 5, 10, 15, 25. Yep, yeah, that is the first 30 multiples of 5. I'm just going to make it the first 10. And maybe I'm just going to say something like print. Here are the multiples. Here are maybe the first 10 multiples of plus user num. Ah, we're going to convert that to string. User num. Okay, let's try it now. So, first 10 multiples of 9. 9, 18, yep, that is beautiful. And making it the first 100 is pretty easy. 101. So, eh, cancel first 100. I'm just going to go with something easy. Yeah, that works great. So, there you go. Um, just to reiterate, we covered how to use loops to repeat a certain command, and then we played around with the loop variable, which is this i here. And we use the loop variable to generate a times table of any number that we would like. Now, final note, um, if you look at the documentation and the notes, I use comments. And in the comments, I typically explain what each line of code does. So I can say here um, something like multiply the loop variable with the user given number um, and you know above that I could say I think this print is pretty explanatory but you know convert user input from string to an integer and um, the reason that you want to be doing uh, commenting on code is well initially when you're just learning it's it's good to know um, what each line does you will understand very clearly the first time you learn it but when you go back to your programs trust me they're going to look a little bit more confusing so writing little notes for yourself is actually a pretty good idea and when your programs get really complex that's when it actually becomes absolutely essential so from now on, I will be commenting on each and every program 
just so I could help you pick up this good habit. All right, on to the next tutorial. All right, you've got to the end and you may be wondering where can you get the file or a PDF document of the same tutorial. Don't worry, the link is right under the video which will take you to this page. The whole Python Fundamentals course, it is free. And you enroll, you enter, I don't know, we can, I created a, a Gmail account, aussiejoblow at gmail.com. Got a password. And agree to the term, sign up. It could be this easy, I think. And there you are. In pick a tutorial. It'll see the same it'll see the same tutorial as it is on YouTube, and you will have a PDF document that goes with and a downloadable file. So enjoy that and see you later.